Ready, set, game cast. Shut up and sit down. Welcome to Ready Set Gamecast, a bi weekly podcast about video games and comic books. I'm Bryce, and I'm joined by the Harley Quinn of podcasting, Darian. Yo! And the Nightwing of video games, Teddy Chinaris. Nightwing is garbage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, he's my favorite. <laughs> he's my favorite. Well, one of my favorites. those nicknames really didn't make sense, but uh, comic books are cool, right, guys? Yeah. Indeed. I, I, dude, I don't know the last time I picked up a comic book, though, sadly. Probably in, like, the summer. I have yeah. a first edition print of a Wonder Woman comic book from 1983. That's kind of dope. It's really dope. That's really cool. I want, I, honestly, for Christmas, I was wanting to get, like, a cheap little tablet you know and then i could subscribe to a certain like i don't know a couple of comic books and read them like every wednesday i feel like Mm. that'd be a cool thing because i've never really done that i just go in and get trades you know what uh comic book i picked up recently the overwatch one i think it's all the uh digital comic books actually printed and in a thing that's really cool i was was like i didn't know that was a thing yeah thought they were only digital that's cool yeah it was uh it was with an art well there was an art book next to it, and I got the actual comics. And huh. dude, dude Aww. came up to me in the shop. Is like, is that an Overwatch comic? And I'm like, yes. And it's the last one, so it sucks it's to me. Mind <laughs> oh, kid, you punched him in the face, and you ran out. Speaking of Didn't Overwatch, Darian, what video games have you been playing? <laughs> and then she's like, Uh-oh. not Overwatch. Though. I was like, yeah. Oh, news time. Uh, okay, so. <laughs> My list is more than just League of Legends and PUBG and what? Fallout Shelter this week. Okay. It's crazy. Because I'm pretty sure last time we recorded, I forgot to mention that I had played Layers of Fear. I don't yeah, remember that if was, we talked about it. You played it after it. We, you were gone. It was after it? Or right, it was right before you were gone. So. It's okay. been, I it's wasn't been, sure. It's been a while. Me and Darian went on a, a week, uh, or technically two-week hiatus. Hope you guys had fun with Matt A. Plays. Well, he's like, a cool dude. Yeah, he's pretty chill. But, uh, yeah, so I played Layers of Fear on stream. Um, that was really fun. Um, I still haven't played the, um, the, uh, DLC yet, but I played the whole base game, got an ending I didn't like, (laughs) so I watched the other ones because I was (laughs) not going to play it again. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I also got Stardew Valley on the Switch, Mm. which is really good. It's a pretty good port. It's really wonky because I'm used to the keys obviously being very different. The the control scheme for console Stardew is just not great. Yeah, it's really they, not that's great. probably the only thing it. they need to fix. I mean, you get used to it, but it's just kind of like... Ugh, I continuously am longer. like fucking stuff up. Like every yeah. time I go to put stuff in the chest, I hit the wrong button and I have to undo it. And I'm yeah. just like, there's like a five second panic of oh god i yeah. fucked up it's mostly <laughs> every stuff time with the, with the cursor like the cursor acts weird yeah the cursor is weird i feel I like they could have uh, on the switch i wish you could like for inventory i wish you could just like drag stuff yeah i don't know why That'd they cool. didn't incorporate that like isn't the switch it, a touch screen like yeah i mean touch screen probably takes more effort than it's worth like most yeah, people and if probably it's just wouldn't one use dev it. well like, i mean they they Expect people to play it in the like it's a console first, so yeah, exactly. They have to make it so you can't use the touch screen. Yeah, you're not always gonna be on the handheld, right? Unless you're. Um, but I played that on my trip. I didn't get to play it for very long because I forgot my glasses at home and I got a headache really quick. Thing. So, Are you but nearsighted or farsighted? I'm actually farsighted, but when I'm in the car, like I have it like far enough away, and like there was, there was, I don't know, I, I, yeah, I don't know. It was, it's really complicated. Okay, I'm weird. Okay, really. But I get headaches when I'm in my car, cause like I won't just look at my game the whole time. I have some severe ADHD, so like I'll look at the game and I'll look out the window and I'll look at my phone and like. In between all that, I got a huge headache, so I had to put the game away, <laughs> like, an hour in. I played it again on the trip and stuff, like, so I got probably, like, two or three hours in, um, but I liked it a lot. 
Um, it's very, it's, I like it a lot. I, there are some things they need to change with the controls, but... I feel like they're honestly not going to, so... I, you yeah. know, well, one can hope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I also finally got on the Cuphead bandwagon uh, recently, oh which was great! <laughs> I love it so much! <laughs> <laughs> that that seems like most people who play Cuphead's response. Did you uh, like, beat it? No, oh, hell no. I'm still in the yeah. first world. <laughs> that would be my response. Oh, hell no. Like, it's oh so my god, fucking no. hard. Like, oh my god. Uh, my focus right now is obviously not going to be on any game but League of Legends because the season is about to end. So we got to do some of that grinding stuff. But before As one this does. last week i've been playing a lot of other games like i also nice. started playing this mobile game called love nikki dress up queen it is a dress up game and <laughs> as you can imagine you have a character and there's a whole weird ass story about she was like transported into this other world that is solely focused on like fashion and design and styling and stuff and it like the whole game starts off like you woke up in this world one day and like she questions it for like one minute and then it's never brought up again. <laughs> it's super weird. <clears throat> but I don't, so what, I don't even wait, know what uh, I like about it. So what's the point? You're just dressing up your character? No, like you, the whole world is like, <clears throat> it's like dress up competitions. But it's oh. just like one on one the whole time. So like you'll have a conversation with this person you met and she'll be like, I bet I can make a better workout outfit than you can. And then you <laughs> have to, it'll give you like one different. One v one me in dressing up. <laughs> <laughs> For real. And it's like every outfit has like two tags. There's like lively and sexy and mm. cute and pure and simple and elegant and shit like that to describe the clothing. And like you have to get the highest score with those tags on the clothing that you wear. And, it sounds know, like it's... Zelda is going to have some real trouble in the game of the year discussion because this game <laughs> right here is going to take it home. This game is taking the cake. So how is it scored? Like, does each clothing have a point value? Well, so there's like grades that you can pull up. There's like uh, generally in each category, it'll have like a D up to like SS. And SS is obviously going to be like the best grade that you can get in that particular category. I don't know. It's really weird. Does it go D C B A S S? D C B A S S S. All right. The the yeah. Japanese style where S is the best letter. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, I that's, uh, I'm yeah, proud I that you're playing other games other than League and PUBG. Though. <laughs> that's nice. I play it all the time. Uh, I think it was Wednesday morning. I we woke up and David was like, "All right, let's go get some food." And I'm like, no, I just downloaded this game. And he fell back asleep while I played this game for the next two hours. That's <laughs> the beauty of a mobile device, though. You take it with you. You know, well, while you're I eating, had, you can He like... wanted me to cook. Oh, And yeah, I was no. busy. So yeah. it was pretty great. Because then we spent the rest of the day just, like, at each other's throats, like, irritated with each other because I didn't feed him right away. Well, that sounds great. <laughs> Bryce, what have you been playing? <laughs> Uh, so I did, yesterday, I did my 24-hour stream for Extra Life, and boy, are my arms tired now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I played a game called Choice Chamber, which is a streamer game, uh, where you connect it to your Twitch chat, and people can come into your chat and vote, uh, on what power you have, what... Uh, how big the world or the rooms are and uh, what power-ups you have, uh, what if the ground is spiky or slippery, uh, how big the monsters are. Basically, everything about the game is up to the vote of your Twitch chat. And uh, I know Teddy uh, has played that before. He played it for like an hour, didn't get very far. Uh, but because I was playing for like 24 hours and a lot of people came to just play that like be in the twitch chat and, and play that i got pretty far um i got through the first world i i guess like after 35 rooms you f fight the second boss and you enter a new world with different monsters and stuff and there's like new weapons you unlock like what seems like a weird kind of simple game uh with like 
Twitch interaction apparently, and it's it's simple combat. It's a lot of pla- a lot of platforming, some simple co- uh, swiping and stuff. But there's a lot to it. The second world has vastly different uh, monsters than the first ones, where the first ones was just kind of walk up to you and t- take a bite. Whereas this in the second world, they've got like rolly guys that you have to kind of bat away. Or they'll uh, just roll over you. There's a guy who will chomp at you, but when you when you defeat him, he's like a porcupine. Will shoot uh, spikes out at you, so you gotta dodge those. Uh, there's and there's a whole bunch of different power ups. Like uh, they can summon a gizmo for you, and there's gizmos that will uh, attack you. There's gizmos that'll offer shields that'll shoot enemies for you. There was one gizmo that. You could jump into his, he's basically a little claw thing, and you could jump into him, and he'll, like, carry you for a little bit. And I fought the the second boss, Room 35, and I get there, and I, I managed to last heart, just last shot, take the boss out. But in that, in that deal, I final jump, I jumped into Gizmo's mouth accidentally. And... Uh, Gizmo flew me to the right and just as the final boss is exploding I whack against the side of the wall Gizmo drops me into lava and I'm out so you don't want to be jumping accidentally into Gizmo's mouth kids yeah that so be on the lookout it's actually very interesting that the what seems like a very simple game that people are probably going to go oh this is cool or like oh this is for streamers only and to be fair you cannot beat the game without having people in your chat there are sections that are specifically uh if, if nobody votes then it just does random but there's specific sections where people have to like build a bridge or or stack a blocks or something in your twitch chat for you so you can't play it without people but it's actually pretty long and got a lot of depth to it so if you are a streamer i definitely recommend checking it out T- Teddy, uh, Teddy tried it and he's he's like, no, I don't like video games. Yeah, I like it. I played it for like an hour one day a couple of months ago and it was fun. And I was like, that was neat. All right, cool. It's not a game I'm gonna play <laughs> for a long time. But uh, another game I played was the VR horror game Duck Season. So, season. Uh, this uh, it's a mix of basically. So you're in the '80s and you're a kid, and your mom rents you. Uh, basically a duck hunt for the NES and you put it in your NES and then you are in the TV shooting ducks and there's the creepy there, well, there's the dog but it basically looks like a guy in a dog costume and he's grabbing the dogs or grabbing the ducks for you and stuff as you shoot them and so the, the section of shooting ducks uh, is every time you do that, you're back in your house and you can uh, grab stuff and look around and all that. But after a couple times of doing that, stuff seems very off. At one point, you get out of the, the game world, you turn to your side, and the dog from that game is outside your your window with a video camera like filming you. And just like, as soon as you notice him, he just like darts away and that game like the 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 ability of vr to make you feel there mixed with very good horror is f- creepy as f i our horror sounds like the worst thing yeah, yeah. <clears throat> literally imaginable i i spent i i had trouble going to sleep that night just like Okay, so if creepy he dog is snapping is, me, is there what, what's <laughs> what's what's my response? <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, if you are willing to play a VR horror game, it is very well done. It's um, from people who used to do Rocket Jump, the YouTube channel Rocket Jump. Uh, Wait, what the whoa, <clears throat> whoa, whoa! You got my attention. What the fuck? Duck season. I'm looking this up. It's, uh, it's, wait, so Rocket Jump has a game dev studio no, now? Uh, no, so guy who used to, I think he was okay, one of the founders of, of Rocket them? Jump. Okay. Uh, Brandon something. Um, oh, I don't remember his last name, but I know ex- I have an yeah, image. So he, I listen to, the, Rocket Jump does a podcast called the Face Rocker Podcast, or they did. It's dead now. I listened to that for like years, so I got like backgrounds of like their office and stuff like that, because I really liked uh, Video Game High School, so yeah. I just... All of a sudden, I was like, oh, now I'm interested. 
<laughs> the, they did a uh, different <laughs> VR game, <laughs> and then <clears throat> they did this one, and and you can tell that they're rocket jump because every every time you get out of the video game uh, world, a little tape, a little video plays on uh, the TV, uh, so you can tell that they they didn't leave their yeah. u- video making uh, lifestyle behind. It's still in their <clears throat> game. Yeah. But yeah, so. That's uh oh, and uh, I played Mario Odyssey. I'm in the second to last world, and it's uh, just as good as everybody says. It is very fantastic. I have I am also playing Super Mario Odyssey. You you, you bought very... a Switch to play Mario Odyssey. Yeah, yeah. I I was going to my my brother in law my sister's apartment last Sunday. And I was like, I went and saw, what did I see last week in theaters? I don't know. I saw, oh, I saw the Tom Cruise movie, American Made. <clears throat> How was which that? Which was all right. How pretty pretty good. It was better than The Foreigner, <clears throat> the Jackie Chan movie. It was definitely better than that one. But, I mean, right now, if you're going to the movies, you're going to see Thor, or you're going to see Blade Runner, like, you know. I still need um, to see Blade Runner. But I stopped by, I stopped right after the movie. I was like, I have time. I drove, there's a Walmart, like, right next to the movie theater. I stopped by, and I was like... If there's a switch in this Walmart, I'm gonna buy it. I'm gonna buy. It. If not, it wasn't meant to be. I'm not even gonna think about it for like. One. And then I went in. There was. It was. I don't know if I've even said this yet on stream or anything. It was the last one. It was the last switch. It was Super Mario Odyssey bundle. It was the last one, and 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 I got it. And now I'm in debt. And I also bought <laughs> Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild and Stardew Valley. So I was also. I I've only played like one day in Stardew Valley though. I just made my character skip the intro and did a day in game time uh just to like get started pretty much and other than that i've just been switching back and forth between odyssey and breath of the wild because they're both so fucking good well, you, they're so good you played breath of wild on wii u haven't you yeah do you beat- I played like tw- no absolutely not no no we talked about how bad <clears throat> i didn't even do a divine was. yeah i didn't and even do didn't a divine like the, beast didn't like the gamepad no the gamepad so he, sucks he dude Y'all want to know how badly the gamepad sucks? How bad does the gamepad suck? It. Look at this dust. <laughs> I don't even know what this is. It's like lint or something. It's dusty. Look at this. I never why picked this up. Just, why do you subject your things to that? <laughs> why don't you just initials? sell it? Yeah, uh, I probably will. I'll probably try and sell the Wii U, honestly. Also, I don't subject my things to that. I subject my things that I don't touch for multiple, multiple months to that. All the other controllers, my Xbox, even my PS3 controller, not dusty. Xbox One controller, PS4, now the Switch Pro controller. All that's good. Oh, you bought a Pro controller too? Yes, I also did buy a Pro controller. (laughs) But after that, I was like, I'm not buying anything for the Switch until like 2018. So you spent like $600 on your Switch all all around like $500. I think it was like a little short of $500. Or something like that. If I walk into the store and it has a Switch. I'm spending all of and the money. Here's the, thing. here's the thing. I really, the Switch, when it was announced, I was like, if it works exactly how they're advertising it, that's like my favorite thing ever. Like, I love the idea because I've done it before with PS4 games of like cross save. I would play, be playing. I would upload the save, grab my Vita, download the save and continue with my Vita. Like I'd go out of town, play that, come home and then continue on the TV. And I was like, if I can do that with the Switch, but instead of like, uploading saves and all that it's literally just and it's yeah. every game on the console that's like possibly could easily be like my favorite console ever like i i love that thing and hearing everybody play the seeing everybody play the switch for the last couple of months and like <clears throat> going to kind of funny live three and everybody playing mario kart and i couldn't and I was just like, so i i was like I waited long enough i need to do this and it was also one of those things that i was like you know, for if any if any of my family members want to give me something for Christmas, now I can say a Switch game. Whereas before, you know, I couldn't. So before I also you would have said, "Hey, someone want to buy me a Switch?" And yeah, nobody and would, it was, and you'd be disappointed. Yeah, and it was also like if I didn't get it now in the holiday season, it they were like they were going to be out. Like getting it right now before uh, what is it Black Friday and then Christmas and all that. I was like, they're going to be out of stock again. I might, you know. It's now or never, you know. Uh, but other than that, I've been playing way, way, way too, way too many things. 
it, it's a problem, really. Um, Destiny 2 on PC came out before, uh, in between last time I recorded, and now I probably played like 12 hours of that. I beat the story on my Titan, and I'm like level 20, but I haven't. I haven't really grinded or anything. There's just too much, too much else to do. And Cuphead, I was also playing a bunch of Cuphead. Cuphead is very frustrating, like you said, like you were saying. But it's it's really good though. Every time like I reach a new phase in a boss fight, I'm just like so happy that I reach a new phase because like something cool is and interesting is happening on screen that I'm like, oh yeah, I'm gonna die a second later. But you know, I got to see the thing, and I want to keep going because I want to see the new things like. That game's really good. Will I ever it's go back good. to it? Probably not. It's good in that, like, the, the it's so gratifying because you die so much. So that yeah. when you finally beat the boss, it's like, yes! Yeah, I and it's also one it. of those things that, like, Fuck. The, the, the patterns are relatively easy to learn. Like, yeah. it's not easy, but, like, it's learning <laughs> patterns and, like, getting better. It's not necessarily, like, these things that are just constant, like, RNG or anything like that. You can just... You know you can... Playing, like, one little bit, you know you can beat that boss. Mm -hmm. Like, if you play it enough, you're gonna beat it. Uh, which is awesome. Cuphead's so good. I played a little bit of Shadow of War the weekend before South Park came out, and then I played South Park. And I'm gonna be playing 2017 games for, like, 10 years uh, but Shadow of War was really good. The little bit I played of it, it was really fun. Uh, South Park is hilarious. Um, and the combat's really good. The the one thing, I don't know, man. I'm not personally a huge fan of the open world parts of South Park. Like, I get, sometimes it, it leads to good jokes, like finding all the, uh, I think it's called Yaoi, all the, all the Japanese art of Tweak and Craig around oh. the place that you find that is hilarious but it's also one of those things that's like there's so much downtime where you have to get to an area where you're just walking like you there's just a lot of walking in that game i i kind of wish they just one day were like here is a giant south park linear episode that you're like playing and having combat in and stuff i don't know um but it's really really funny assassin's creed origins as a huge assassin's creed fan um it is doing exactly what i want it to do the story is really good uh bayek like the main character is really interesting and like the assassin's creed stories are very character based like if you have a good uh main character you're gonna have a good story uh at least for the most part like Ezio. um eh, man what's his name edward edward kenway in four black flag that's who I'm going for. I think it was Edward. Yeah, uh, he's a he's a really good uh, he's a really good main character as well. He's super charming and stuff like that. And like, if they're a really good main character, they can carry the story even if it's not super uh, interesting in and of itself. And Bayek is an awesome main character so far. The combat is really really good. The world is huge. the The mechanics of Sinew and how he works with the environment and how like if you need stuff you can farm it, but it's not like with Far Cry where it's on the map you have to use Sinew. Origins is really good, and I'm liking it a lot so far, but I need to get back to it. But yeah, also been playing Super Mario Odyssey and Breath of the Wild a ton. Um, and Call of Duty World War II came out recently, and I'm playing a lot of that. Uh, I've dabbled in the zombies and the multiplayer. Uh, I've played a surprising amount of multiplayer with, uh, with one other friend. And it's just, it's surprisingly good. I'm liking it a lot. Uh, it, I'm... I'm a kid who started on Call of Duty, and Call of Duty is kind of in my roots. So whenever there is a new Call of Duty, I'm mostly, almost all the time, I play it for a couple of months and have fun. So, yeah, that's what I've been playing. A lot of stuff. Okay. Well, you know what people haven't been playing or will not be playing in the future? <laughs> Little Sadly. video game called Lego Dimensions, because it's dead. <laughs> Yeah. Teddy, why don't Just you tell like me about Disney that? Disney Infinity. They, they released a statement. Pretty much everyone figured that LEGO Dimensions was dead because they said that it, they they originally planned the game as a three-year cycle, but all the stuff that they had announced were coming. Like, they didn't... They just pretty much went radio silent for a while. And then recently, they released a statement that said, Warner Bros. Interactive Entertainment, TT Games, and the LEGO Group would like to thank fans for their ongoing support of LEGO Dimensions. After careful consideration, we will not be producing new expansion packs for the game beyond what is now available we will continue to provide ongoing server and customer support for all lego dimension packs existing packs will continue to work interchangeably and will remain available for purchase 
So, so not it just is like dead. So, infinity. no. Does it? I mean, they're they're continuing to sell what's available. They're just not making anything new. Mm. Are they are they making more of the packs that currently exist? Probably. While they're still selling, they're going to keep them in production, I imagine. But then as yeah. soon as they stop selling, they'll probably like discontinue them. Yeah. They're they're not gonna make more assets. No, they're 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 not adding new IP or anything like that. Interesting. Um, but yeah, as somebody who was really I always wanted to get into Lego Dimensions, but it was super expensive. Now I'm kind of glad I didn't. Or at the same time, I'm kind of like maybe one day they release an ultra mega super bundle for like 500 bucks. That's like everything in the game. That would be cool. I mean, and I'd be all over that. Pretty soon they'll probably you'll be able to pick up each pack for like 50 cents because everybody will be clearing out their stock. As someone who went hard on Disney Infinity, like I, I bought a lot of that stuff at full price. There, but I have a shelf in my basement that is just a big shelf of a lot of Disney Infinity figures. I would and, like a snap of that. And uh, <laughs> yeah. See, yeah, so see, that's one thing that's dead. You know what else is dead? The Kinect. Microsoft officially is, has killed off the Kinect. They have said that they are not manufacturing any more Kinects at all. Like, they've stopped producing them, which is one of the things, like, Kinect, they've been phasing Kinect out for years. Like, it's not like anybody was really awaiting the next AAA Kinect game, <laughs> but they've been phasing that out for, uh, for, for years, and now they've pretty much officially stopped production. Which is... I mean, they tried hard to push. Yeah. They they bu- they forced you to buy one early on. Yeah, at launch. I mean, at launch, it was all part of the of the original plan for the for the Xbox One and how that system worked was like your the all in one entertainment system where you could be like Xbox, open Netflix, go to channel, blah blah blah. Um, but yeah, no. Now it is dead. Which I've heard, the one thing that I hear from people that they loved about Kinect is the voice commands, where they could just go, Xbox, open Netflix, Xbox, open this game, stuff like that, where they could just control the Xbox with their voice, which I find weird that a lot of people like that just release like a really cheap little microphone with that technology that you could just plug in and just have it sit on your thing. I feel like that would be a a good solution for that, but... So they're ending the voice control, or...? What? Like, are they not going to release some kind of change for that? Because, like... No. Not as, no, not any hardware. Why like, if you still have the, the connect, it'll still work. Yeah, built-in microphone. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's another one of the things. But at the same time, the connect was supposed to be built-in. So it's like, yeah. Yeah. Um, Isn't that something they were going to do with the Xbox One? Originally? Well, yeah. I mean, you couldn't buy an Xbox with without a connect for... Like the first two years, yeah. and originally they said they were like, "We're never going to sell an Xbox without Connect." And then Phil Spencer's like, "Yo, what's up? Not nah, get this out of here." So. Uh, <laughs> do you know if you could stream to Twitch from your Xbox or- originally? Originally, I don't know. Uh, I know you can now. Yeah. B- um, PS4 had that feature right away, and they could I not. Think you could. They could not keep PlayStation cameras like that. I mean, I think they under PlayStation did not produce that many cameras, and people were trying to buy them all because they wanted to be streamers. So the fact, I mean, it's crazy that PlayStation camera, who never tried to make a whose tech was technology wasn't as fancy as the Kinect, that that camera is still out there, and Kinects died. I mean, the problem with Kinect is that it was connected to the idea of, like, the Xbox One, you know, TV, TV, Call of Duty, Call of Duty, like, the original Xbox One launch, where they were like, oh, this is all about entertainment, where everybody was just like, if I could pay, you know, $60 less for that console, that would be, or however much Connect is, that would be really nice, because I don't want it. But they were forcing you to get it. That's one of the problems with and, it. So. And there were no games that used it, so... Yeah, exactly. It was... Mainly just the, uh, mainly just the uh, chat functions. So hey, lots of Just things. Dance worked with Connect. <laughs> yeah, it did. Uh, Just Dance does work with Connect, I believe. And I think, from what I heard, I think it's like the most accurate, like one of the systems, like Switch or PlayStation. Probably. Do you know, like, reads your whole Do you know what body? game doesn't use the Connect? Overwatch. Overwatch doesn't use the Connect, but I sure <laughs> that's a good transition. Now I'm gonna, now I'm gonna say, psych. You know, I'm sorry. I may. 
I made some adjustments. I threw in a new article that I forgot to put in at the beginning uh, that also fits in with this theme of things dying. The Kinect is dead. Lego Dimensions is dead. And Housemark says that arcade games are dead. Uh, the, I meant to throw this in earlier. This is one of the most important articles for like the last month that I just forgot about. Uh, I'll go over it real fast. Pretty much Housemark develops really... Their main games are like really arcade uh, shooter types games. Uh, Next Machina, Matterfall, those are the ones uh, out. And I think, is Matterfall out yet? I think that's either out or coming out. Uh, Rezogun, Super Stardust, all those types of super arcade high score chasing uh, really fun games. Uh, Housemark is like the king of them. Oh, Alienation, I like that one a lot. Uh, they came out with a statement that was pretty much just like, for 20 years, we've been making arcade games, but it's just not, it's just not working. Like we, they're, they're, they pretty much said that they're selling well and well enough, but they want to grow as a studio. So they're not making arcade games anymore, which is very sad to me because I'm a big fan of Resogun and Alienation and all that. Uh, someone pointed out when they announced that, like, did you try putting it on the Switch? Because like that, that type of game is perfect for the Switch of just pick up, play, yeah. Take it, like... Oh, yeah, for sure. Housemark is usually... I don't know. I think some of their games might have came out on PC as well, but most mostly it's <clears throat> PlayStation exclusive. I think there might even be a first-party studio. Um. So, yeah, I, as a big... Did you ever play Rezogun or any of those games? Because, God... I played Housemarque a little bit of so Rezogun, good. but like I, I've, I've mentioned in awesome. previous podcasts, I'm more of a story gamer, so that type of game never really yeah. appealed mm, to me. Interesting. Well... I'm very bummed about it. But that's the thing. I feel like this it's a bummer that Housemark, like the king of these types of games, are not doing it anymore. But somebody's going to pick up the torch. Like, there's still indies out there who are going to be doing the same thing, and eventually somebody's going to step into that role. But for a while, we're not going to have any of that, which is a bummer. But you know what we are going to have? Overwatch. Take it away, Bryce. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh! Doctor! Okay, uh... <laughs> Can I can I pass this to Darian because I yeah, honestly absolutely. don't play Overwatch and did not pay attention to BlizzCon at all. So yeah, BlizzCon was this past weekend, and they announced a bunch of stuff about Overwatch and uh, World of Warcraft and Starcraft and all that. Darian, tell I feel like us about Eddie BlizzCon. Specifically, said he was excited about these things. I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited about uh, the wow, the WoW stuff mostly. I'm excited about the Overwatch stuff a little bit. If you so, okay. If you want so, to, you can talk about the Overwatch stuff. I've so been talking a lot. So they announced a new hero. Her name is Moira. She's going to be a healer. She's a support. Her backstory is pretty interesting. I don't 100% remember <laughs> what I don't it was. Either. I, I know that her, her. I read her, her abilities a little bit. Yeah. And like it seems like her main heal is also like a life steal. Thing yeah, that heals herself. That. So she's like a vampire cool. type character. Yeah. Well, she's That's very science. She's very sciencey though. Like, yeah. Her whole thing is like developing things for science, and I'm pretty sure she's with Black Watch. Yeah, I, th I think so. It certainly her, seems her little that way. intro video looked like she was not. She's like, definitely a fan like, and she's yeah, she's <laughs> with uh, Reaper and Widowmaker and yeah. Sombra and uh, Doomfist. I don't remember what their new thing, Talon. Oh, yeah, 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 Talon. They're, she's in Talon. Mm. Yeah, her, so that's pretty cool. Uh, her character model looks really cool. She looks badass. Yeah, she looks awesome. But that's one of the things that's like, if a new Overwatch hero is coming out, if anything, they're going to look cool. Yeah. <laughs> like, they. Oh, Blizzard is great at that. So, um, well, there's already Mercy, uh, there's already two healers, Mercy and uh, the... There's four healers. There's Mercy... There is som er, Sombra. <laughs> <laughs> so there's Mercy. There is, uh, um, to, oh, God, the Omnic. What the fuck? Uh, Zenyatta? Zenyatta, thank you. Lucio and then uh, Anna. Yeah, the, the sniper healers. healer, which yeah. I, I tried which once, and that seems so weird. second best healer in the game. She's great. <laughs> Don't She's diss. great, but if you have terrible aim like me, you're going to play Mercy. Yeah, instead. you have to be good at her for, to make her <laughs> great. Be, like, I'm not good at her, but she's good. a great I mean, support. To be good, you got to be good. <laughs> so <laughs> what makes this me. healer <laughs> special? It seems like the the life steal aspect so far. We yeah, I don't think the there's way, any like real the way gameplay she's of she's actively stealing health from enemies to heal herself. Cuz like 
uh, Lucio's heal works in that it's an area of effect. Everybody in it is going to be healing at a very slow rate with a boost with one of his abilities. Mercy has a one-person heal uh, that's really strong, and when she's out of combat for a certain amount of time, she'll heal back herself relatively quickly. But Moira seems to be like in the action, actively healing someone while also actively damaging someone and healing herself. Like it's a lot of healing and damage all at once. It seems okay. So she's cool. like a she's a damage hero that also heals. Sort of. She's more focused on healing. The damage is a passive thing. So she's focusing on a. Uh, her, her target is on an ally, as far as I can tell. I could be wrong. But her aim is on an ally, and then a nearby enemy could be sucked into the area of effect sort of thing. Right? If that's... I might be misinterpreting it. I only it, saw but... two of her video. I, I only saw the two videos with her, and they were both, like, introductions, and neither of them had any sort of real gameplay or anything. Actually, one of them had a little bit of gameplay, but it wasn't showing off specifically, like, this is ability whatnot. But uh, she also... Oh man, it's been a while. I gotta look at the video. But she seemed pretty quick. Like all of the, she kept like being in the back lines and like uh, focusing that way. Being right. Being so a okay. Sneaky. So it's her left hand. She expands biotic energy to heal allies in front of her, and her right hand fires a long range beam weapon that saps enemies' health, healing Moira and replenishing biotic energy. So left click and right click. Do different things. It's not simultaneous. I misinterpreted mm. it. So it's kind of like how Mercy's left click is her heal and her right click. Or no. Yeah, and her right click is a boost. Right? Damage boost, yeah. Yeah. So I play on PS4 mostly. I can't help you with the clicks. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, fuck, I haven't played Overwatch in like literally like three months. Yeah. Um, I don't know. She I looks get interesting. about all the new stuff, but I yeah. don't play I'll it. I'll be excited to play her uh, because I do like healing when it's easy, not when it's mm -hmm. Ava. <laughs> I suck at that. You know which Overwatch character I have played? Reinhardt. hey -o. And uh, we learned a little bit about that man in their short. Gave a little fucking yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah. short. That was really good. That was really good. I, I'm curious. Like, I, I don't know how people really play. I'm wondering if, like, people who play Reinhardt might, or newer players, might want to go run around and be douchey and just try and play, play by themselves, not be a shield. And, and this video was like, be a shield. <laughs> because, I mean, Ryan, it shows Reinhardt not being a shield just trying to kick ass on his own and everyone else is like fucked please, up. please please help <laughs> <laughs> you have a shield for a reason <laughs> yeah i uh i love the overwatch shorts so much they're so good they're like my f they're legitimately my favorite things about overwatch is the shorts so whenever there's a new one i'm like oh, oh, popping you know put it full screen get some popcorn shut down the lights not really i should do that next time uh, but yeah, there. This one was really, really good. It Doing was a really hard party next time. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, hop in my I Discord while we we'll watch bit. it together. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dude. If I, that's one of those things that I wish I owned like a movie theater <laughs> that I could just put off on the uh, in like set aside a screening like for specific internet things. That'd be awesome. Uh, but yeah, it was really heartfelt around the end, and it made me tear up a little bit. And I was a big fan of it. You know what else I'm a big fan of? World of Warcraft. Let's go, boys! <laughs> so World of Warcraft. Uh, this is one of the other things at BlizzCon that happened that I'm super into. Holy shit! I cannot tell you how good Blizzard is at their animations. Like I just told you about the previous one. And then they have another one for the new expansion. So they announced two big things for World of Warcraft. One, which is super interesting that nobody ever would have guessed they were going to do they announced it was pretty much just with a trailer that showed all the big cinematics going backwards like rewinding back to the first cinematic which is super cool and then it was like wow world of warcraft classic so they are going to put up some sort of service we don't know if it's going to be like a separate subscription fee or which i doubt i don't know we'll see we don't know if it's going to be like really separate or or what it's going to be but they're making World of Warcraft classic servers where they're going to try and recreate vanilla, which as somebody who was not in vanilla, but you hear all the time, like I play World of Warcraft really casually. 
So, but I do hear all the time from people, oh man, I played in vanilla when WoW didn't suck. Oh, ever since oh, the blow expansion XYZ, it's been garbage. Uh, so, like, there's a lot of people that just stopped because they apparently Blizzard really changed design philosophies. Um, so, I'm going to be excited to see people's reactions when it goes live. Because I think a lot of it is rose-tinted goggles or glasses or whatever the phrase is. I think a lot of it, people are going to be remembering really, really good times. And then they're going to get back in here and be like, oh, there's a lot of stuff that was actually missing that is, makes the game actually better now. Um, and I've heard that from people who did play in vanilla, that they also think that's how it's going to be. So I'll be really interested to see that. I kind of want to try it out, too. If it's included in the regular subscription fee, I'll definitely try it out. I'll load in and see what that's about. Uh, but honestly, I think that's really far away because they didn't announce. I don't think they announced any sort of timetable for either the classic or the new expansion called World of Warcraft Battle 4. Azeroth? Let me make sure. Of Azeroth. Battle of Azeroth. Um, which is really exciting. I will say, it's kind of not as big of a wow factor. Or er, wow. You know, World of Warcraft. It's not as big of a, like, crazy cool factor as the last two. At least for me from a casual perspective. Because Warlords of Draenor was like, you saw the cinematic, and it was apparently about time travel and alternate like dimensions and shit like parallel dimensions and then legion was about like this army that's been looming for like years of like this of the i think it's a burning crusade no that's that's a lie but the legion right coming in and finally attacking and like the the alliance and the horde had to team up to stop them and it was like this big event right battle of azeroth just seems kind of like and now we're back to fighting each other like, kind of the staple of World of Warcraft is Alliance versus Horde, and this is mainly focused on Alliance versus Horde. So it's like, I feel like there's not necessarily a big event, but that's okay because, from my little knowledge, the last couple of World of Warcraft things have been huge. So I guess it's totally fine for them to step, step, step back, go back to basics, and uh, I'm very excited about it. The cinematic trailer was it dope as hell it's really good it's basically a battle between like sylvanas and the horde fighting uh anduin and the alliance and they're just like fighting and both of them have a really cool like for the horde and for the alliance moment that's like oh it's great um so i'm gonna play that no idea if i really will play that i want to but you know i play it very very casually i've played wow for like 300 400 hours legion is the first expansion that i had a max level character during the expansion and i still have never done a raid in world orc ever never done a raid i really want to do a raid so i don't know i'll get in and i'll probably level up from 110 to 120 and that'll probably be what i do but i'm excited about it it's if i'm guessing i feel like it's going to be next fall is the release i think that's usually how they announce those things but there's no timetable yet but i'm excited Let's also hypothesize that they're going to be released and like severely separated because they don't want yeah. WoW Classic point. to take away from the new expansion. Yeah. I don't know which one they're going to release first. I imagine probably the expansion first. Probably. Um, I'm really excited for Classic, though. I want to see what it was like. I'm yeah. not super into WoW, but I know when I played it for like two streams, I was like, there <laughs> is way too much on. shit here like i have no idea what's going yeah. on at all and i was yeah. just like overwhelmed so i'm kind of excited to see wow classic yeah there's something about world of warcraft that may that fascinates me with stuff like that like i the idea of vanilla and all that like that's a that's a big moment in video game history that mm -hmm. i was alive for but like i was too young to be Missed. playing it and yeah. i wasn't really into it around that time and stuff like that so it's like I was there. It was kind of happening when I was here, but like I, <laughs> I, didn't, I, I wasn't heard about it. Yeah, it was like I over here, was, but I was like I right here, it. just kind of looking, but not really. <laughs> yeah. looking. So I want to, I want to, like every time I hear somebody talk about their times in Vanilla WoW, I, I'm very interested to hear about it because I don't know, I find it fascinating. But yeah. So all the previous expansions have kind of had the uh, Lions and Horde teaming up for a big bad and never actually fighting each other, despite that being the crux of. Well, no, they still technically in the lore, like at least during the PvP, like PvP is always still Alliance and Horde. 
Like, they're always still kind of at each other's throat, but in the story, they have to team up to fight a big thing. But usually, as soon as the big thing is dead, like in the final part of the story, then it's like, and eh, now we're back to fight each other. <laughs> but from what I understand, they removed PvP servers. Mm, I didn't hear anything about this. Interesting. I, I, I'm looking it up, and it looks like they removed PvP servers. So the fact that they're going oh. with a whole you know, oh, versus hmm. thing is very interesting. So, yeah, PvP servers is, like, the the open world, like, when you're running around and you see another person, if you're in a PvP area, you can, you can attack them, right? But having general PvP will still almost definitely be there. I mean, like, absolutely. Uh, so, yeah, that's interesting. I do know the cool thing that they're doing is, like, Alliance has their own starting zone, and Horde has their own starting zone for the story, and they're both like they're they're both starting in different areas, which is cool because usually it's like one area. Oh, really? I didn't know that they start yeah. in the same place. Yeah, you you in expansions like in Legion, you all started at this big place. I don't know. I think in Warlords you did too. It's the only time I was really playing currently, but yeah, I'm excited about it. It's gonna be cool. Uh, so we got a lot of other big game news out of Paris recently. Specifically, some Sony news. Oh, yeah. Um, let's start off with Spelunky 2. This one with girls. <laughs> <laughs> Did Spelunky originally not have girls in it? Actually, I think it was, but it was just the main character. <laughs> I was character. about to say, I was like... I mean, there was side characters you could unlock, uh, but the main character was a uh, dude, and this time hmm. you appeared to be playing as his daughter, at least based oh, on the... Cool. Uh, the trailer it shows kind of little snapshot snap eh. snap shots <laughs> oh, <Snapchat>. showing <laughs> showing that like uh spelunky man uh met friends which is the other unlockable characters uh completed his journey started a family had a daughter and then it shows uh the dad giving the daughter his hat and then slowly he fades out of the photo so I think it's showing that he's dead. Yeah, honestly, I think that's probably it. Right? <laughs> it is so. Well, yeah. if you're a big sad. fan of Splunky, there's more of that. Yeah. So the the pre-show had a couple of like announcements, but the two big ones were Splunky two and Guacamelee two, which I am very excited about Guacamelee two. Guacamelee, the original Guacamelee is super good. I super good. Didn't get into it, but really, it's awesome. It's a really cool uh, Metroidvania that got pretty hard at some points if i remember oh i also went back to do the hard uh playthrough for the trophy and i got a little bit in i was like this game is fucking pushing my face in uh but yeah it guacamelee is awesome play guacamelee has a really cute little sense of humor and if anybody else i need to talk about this game all right one thing if you don't know this about me my three favorite or i'll just say my first and second my favorite video game series of all time is Infamous, Infamous, followed closely by Uncharted. Infamous by Infamous 2 is my favorite video game of all time. I'm a big fan of Sucker Punch. Sucker Punch is awesome. Every single last PSX and last E3, or two E3s ago, last PSX, and then this last E3, each time I'm like, this has got to be the one. Sucker Punch is going to come out. They're going to tell us what they're working on. It's got to be the one. Each one. And then this last E3, when they didn't do it, I was like, what are you doing? It's been so many years. Like, I think Second Sun came out in 2014, and I believe First Light was 2015. I'm not 100% on that. But it's been a long time. They've been working on this game for a long time. And they came out with a cinematic uh, CG trailer. It's, uh, it's a game pretty much about being a samurai. Uh, and it's called Go uh, Ghost of Tsushima. That's how you say that. Uh, and honestly, I really want to see more. I will say, like, being completely honest, the trailer was good. It wasn't amazing. Like, it didn't It didn't make me go, whoa, it's crazy, I can't... But what made me go, whoa, it's crazy, was when I was watching it, and then at the end, it goes, sucker punch. And I was like, let's go! <laughs> because I know that studio, I know what they do, I know they make really good games. It's the same type of thing that they did with Infamous, only without su the superpowers. It's going to be an open-world game, they've said, so they're staying in their wheelhouse. Because I know them and I know what they're capable of, I'm very excited. Can't wait to hear more. Uh, 
Now, uh, next up, uh, Darren, we got some uh, news that you might be into. Uh, we got a new Destiny 2 expansion coming out. <laughs> <laughs> Destiny 2, what is this that you're speaking of? I don't know. It's I'll, the I'll new let, Club Penguin. I'll, I'll, let, I'll let Teddy explain it. Uh, I'm I'm sure you'll be too excited to really uh, tell us everything. <laughs> I T- can't Teddy, Teddy why, why don't yeah, you? Yeah. The, uh, the Destiny 2 DLC, they showed off a really cool trailer for it, pretty much being like Curse of Osiris, which we already knew that. Or which, well, I'm pretty sure we already knew that. Yeah, Darian, weeks. we knew this. Um, yeah, yeah, Curse of Osiris, you know, Trials of Osiris, Destiny Year One, you know what I mean? Not really Year Two, actually, but um, Curse of Osiris is the name of the DLC. It's coming out December 5th, um, and it has a places a big focus on Osiris, which is he's one of the most famous uh, warlocks or just guardians in general in the lore. Uh, that we've known about for years. We've Trials of Osiris was a game mode in uh, Destiny that came out in the summer of the year after it came out, so 2015, probably June, I think, with uh, House of Wolves. Trials of Osiris was like a super serious game mode that got a, it was kind of the end game for a lot of PvP players, and now it's in Destiny 2 as Trials of the Nine, but we've been playing this game mode for like years and the NPC who gives you like bounties for it would like mention Osiris every now and then and stuff like that. And we'd every now and then with new weapons, maybe we'd learn more about the lore. So uh, people who are really big fans of the lore, like my friend Eric, my friend Andrew are losing their minds right now because they've been reading about Osiris for years and now he's actually in the game, which is exciting. Uh the one big thing, personally, is like they said, that, uh, you know, you're going to be going to Mercury, new story missions, blah, blah. New raid content? It didn't say a new raid. It said new raid content, which could mean new raid weapons. It could mean maybe they add a new encounter to the Leviathan raid. It could mean maybe they add challenges but they're already doing maybe they like bounties of some kind like i i don't know new raid content which is going to be interesting people have been theorizing what that is i honestly think it's going to be some sort of small uh not as like intense uh six man activity i would be totally happy if they just gave me something else to do with six people in destiny 2 right now all you can do with six people is a raid like before you could also do pvp now pvp is 4v4 you can't even go into patrol with six people patrols locked off to three like if you have six all you can do is raid like so i i would very much like more uh to do with that amount of people even though i can't get them together to raid for the life of me (laughs) it's upsetting uh we also got uh some new trailers for games we already know about a uh, new shadow of colossus trailer uh a new trailer for the uh insomniac spider-man game which showed a lot of what i assume is mary jane which makes me wonder if she's gonna be a main focus or possibly even somewhat playable she is mary jane is a playable character it was confirmed interesting insomniac said that she is a playable character which is very cool excited to see what that'll look like yeah definitely like you'll you'll have the super is peter parker gonna be a playable character then i imagine yeah. the, the well i mean wait, wait, what what <laughs> what does that mean spider-man We're game but you don't play spider-man i'm saying not as spider-man Would, oh uh possibly it's a good question will, will you ever be not in suit is what a good I'm question. Saying. I mean, that's very possible. Insomniac has talked about the game saying, like, it's very much a Peter Parker story just as much as it is Spider-Man. So that's very, very likely. Okay, because I was going to say, like, oh, we'll get the dynamic of having someone who is all powers and then Mary Jane, who is the more human element. Uh, so I'm, I, I'm wondering, maybe we won't play Peter Parker. Mary yeah. Jane will fill that role. Miles Morales also showed up in the trailer for like a second, which was cool. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we'll be playing as him. Just a nice little mention of Ultimate Spider-Man. I, I don't know, man. I think they could do anything. I think they could at at the end of the game be like, "And hey, we're passing the torch." Like, I, I don't know, man. Who knows? Who knows? He could just be in there for like a little mention, or you never know. Could be like, "Psych, you play as Peter Parker for one mission, and the rest of the game is Miles." Yeah, that's that's how it's gonna go. <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy Psych. dude plot twist but yeah the spider-man trailer was cool 
Uh, the God of War trailer was not really a trailer. It was like 60 seconds of gameplay. <laughs> and I was like, it's kind of weird. I don't know why we need to see this. Um, I actually, the Detroit Become Human trailer was just like me immediately going, all right, yep, I did, this is more like I want this game. Every single time they show a trailer, especially, I think it was the one from either E3 or PSX, the one where it's the detective and it's about the kid that's like going to fall off the roof and the guy has the kid. That that trailer right there, every time I see it, I'm like, holy shit. Because <laughs> it was the first one that I had really seen of the game and it was like, oh. That game's going to be really, really cool. All the different choices and how that can turn out, I hope is as good as it sounds. Um, and then The Last of Us 2 trailer, which I haven't actually seen yet because I've been watching the conference because I didn't watch it live. I've been watching it on YouTube and trying to catch up, and I'm literally at the point where they're about to see The Last of Us trailer, and I'm like, well, I just haven't, I had to well, leave. Well, let me tell you about it. Uh, so it features... Um a group who has just captured a woman and they string her up by a noose and get ready to hang her when suddenly uh, arrows start flying at them and taking them out and uh, no, sorry. Getting ahead of myself. A uh, a woman comes uh, a woman comes out from the woods uh, and and uh, gets their attention uh keep keeps the woman in the noose noose from getting uh, hung and uh they're like where's the rest of the acolytes and she she won't talk so they take a hammer to her arms and smash her arms at least one of them before the arrows start flying and uh take takes out uh some of them the woman in the no- noose manages to uh, get her legs around the other, uh, and they go down. And uh, the so there's three women women in total: one with the broken arm, uh, one who comes out of the woods uh, who had been shooting an arrow. She's got a bald head, and uh, the woman in the noose. And uh, they they line up together, uh, like well they they talk for a little bit, and then they hear noises in the woods clicking. And they're like, okay, got to get ready for, let's get ready for a fight. Which, in my experience, like, they, they're like, only one of them has a bow. Uh, the the blonde woman, who is jacked as fuck, who was in the noose, is just like, okay, I'm ready to punch them. Uh, with my experience, that doesn't go well. <laughs> no, not usually. <laughs> and and so, no, no sign of Joel or Ellie. And I think it's kind of showing that, like, there will be other characters and people are thinking that the blonde woman might at least one of the people might be Ellie's mom. Hmm. Interesting. They, um, did they name any of the characters? No, they, no, no, we, 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 we saw Ac- acolytes. That's the only like name. N- yeah. Name that we, we've learned from that. Hmm. I, I'm not. I'm not sure who the people hanging, uh, who died were, or even who the people who rescue. I'm not sure who any of these people are. Just it's a weird. That sounds like a weird choice for a trailer. It kind of is just like a scene from the game that they pulled out and they're just like here. I, I think it's it's showing that like you know there's more going on than Ellie and Joel in this world. We're seeing other people existing. I don't know if I like and, that. And kind of <laughs> other other factions that exist other than the fireflies and the government so interesting that game is very far away i'm i'm i was super surprised that they had anything at i was like really last was two showed off something at paris games week so yeah that game is very far away i just it i hope people don't keep uh i hope people don't get their hopes up that that game's like next year or this year or anything because i i remember when that they showed that off at psx last year and the one of uh, one of the dudes I one of the Twitch streamers I follow on Twitter was like, "Man, next year is gonna be crazy. 2017, The Last of Us Part Two. It's gonna be." Aw-. I'm like, "Whoa, whoa, well, let's slow it down. Not gonna be 2017. Not even probably gonna be 2018. Probably gonna be further. But I'm very excited about the game. At this point, I just I don't want to see anymore. <laughs> just, just, just stop showing that game, and I'll just play it when it comes out. Thank you." 
<laughs> I had asked on Twitter of like, should I watch the trailer or just hold off? And I think weren't still you watch it? Yeah, yeah you were the one it. who were like, what? yeah. But you haven't I would, seen I'm it. I'm still gonna watch the trailers when they come out, but I don't want them to release anymore. <laughs> That's the thing. I'm not gonna have any self control not to watch trailers. I also really enjoy trailers. I like trailers. They they get you hyped, you know. But um, I just I don't I don't I want them to stop talking about it because I just don't want. I, I get into a I get scared that they're showing off too much. You know, I don't want them to I want there to still be surprises. I'm I'm a jaded Dusty fan. <laughs> this looks like it might have been content made for trailer, not not anything that's gonna be in the game. The way but, it sounded sounded like it's a scene ripped out of context from the game to to show off. Well like like the trailer from the, the first Last of Us trailer. Oh the first trailer it's just a trailer. Yeah, I'm, I don't think either of these trailers are actual content. because I did see a couple of screenshots and, and like a, literally like 10 seconds of the trailer. From that, it looked like it was just from the game. The first one didn't even look like from the game. That looked like a CG. Like Oh, this, this is way too pretty. This is not in-game. Well, also, you got to remember, it is Naughty Dog. So you never yeah, know. Maybe yeah, both of them are in the game because Naughty it, Dog's it crazy. Could be. They're, <laughs> shit's pretty these days. I, yeah. I was played a little bit of Assassin's Creed the other day, and people were talking about how pretty it looks. So with the with the level of tech we're at, like it's hard to differentiate. Yeah. What what's the CGI, CGI and, what's and game? gameplay? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Uh, so I think that's all the news we have for this week. Time to get to the topic of the show. So we are coming to the end of the year, which is Game of the Year discussions. Uh, Race at Gamecast is going to name a Game of the Year at some point. We're going to figure that out. But Shit. I was going to say, I feel like maybe we should bring in like one or two guests for that show. That'd be fun. Yeah, we could figure out fun. that. Yeah. But first, we need to figure out should an early access game be considered for game of the year? That is a big problem this year with big games like Player Unknown's Battlegrounds and Fortnite being out there. Fortnite, I don't think, is in, in the running for, like, people aren't worried about that winning, but P PUBG, a lot of people love. It could definitely win game of the year, even if it doesn't officially come out this year. So, should early access be counted what do you think darian um i honestly don't think that it should be considered it's not officially released it's not a full game technically um it it's basically like well cod like if it if cod hadn't been released uh, though world war ii if it hadn't been released till 2018 but the beta came out and it was beautiful and they had open beta and everybody could play it and it just it was the best COD game ever released. And somehow it won game of the year with just their beta. And then they canceled the game before it came out. Like, you know what I mean? Like if H1Z1 had gotten one, it's still in early access. If it had somehow gotten game of the year, like that doesn't make sense. Like it's not a full game. It's not released. I don't think it should be considered. Like Here's the thing. That's where I originally stood. And I still kind of stand there, but it's like, as a as a whole, should early access games be considered for game of the year? I think as a whole, I think they should be considered. I don't think, I don't know if any game has ever released in early access that could. I don't think PUBG, personally, I don't think PUBG should even come close, but I know it will. I, th I think... It, a certain amount of like outlets are gonna give it to PUBG, but I don't. I don't think it should get it at all. But as a principle, I think a game the way early access works, especially on PC these days, is just like, I mean, how long was H1 or Daisy in early access before like an official release? Like months, years. Like uh, th there are certain games that have been in early access for like years, and uh, they're like really fully featured and like. I don't know. I just, at a certain point, maybe, like, maybe saying that it's early access just doesn't mean anything because it's out. You can play it. You know, like, you can download it and play it just like you could a regular game. 
Uh, the only difference is they're saying, hey, there might be bugs. You know, it's still it's still being worked on. So at a certain point, it's like, maybe I think it should be considered sometimes. It's very rocky. I don't think in this specific situation, I think you can consider PUBG just because it's like, it's been it's been out for months people have been playing it it's like breaking records left and right like i don't know i think you should maybe consider it but i don't think it should win that's just a personal thing i mean if it was out now if it was officially out now i don't think you would vote for it just because that's your taste no yeah I don't, I don't think it i i i don't know in general i think a game of the year should encompass many aspects of a game and PUBG only encompasses a few. Uh, see, I mean, I'm totally... <sighs> the whole early access thing is so weird because I'm not really sure what makes... What is going to be really different from PUBG now and PUBG when it's released, uh, mm -hmm. other than a few bug cleanups and they add a few features, but most games add features even after they're out. So that distinction doesn't mean all that much. But if PUBG wasn't officially released until 2018, uh, it probably would not win any game of the years in 2018 because a lot of people have fallen off PUBG. A lot of, a lot of big outlets have moved on and no one is going to remember PUBG in 20, at the end of 2018. Uh, they would have played it when it was in early access and its story is done so if if it's not considered now it will not be considered ever yeah that's the thing it's like in the conversation right now it's yeah. a, it's like this is the this is the year of PUBG, even though it's not actually out yeah so i i don't know i'm i'm kind of i'm very on the fence on this one <laughs> i see both sides okay hard yes or no darian should should early access be considered no. Teddy, hard yes or no? Hard yes or no? Yes, you gotta pick a no. side. No? No. See, the thing with, like, Teddy's argument is, like, yeah, it should be considered, but no, it shouldn't win, then why should it be considered, like... <laughs> I think it should be considered because it's in... I don't know, it's in the conversation, it's, like, big, it's broken it a ton of records. It should maybe get, like, like an honorable mention, like, hey, this was a big game, like, this was important, like, this this game made a whole like made a splash i know there it's are an important that game are... of the year it yeah. is not the game of the year no way it's I know not are... a done game yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> i know there are people that uh are really really into it and are like it's my game of the year i'd love to talk to them <laughs> i know those people exist i'd love to love well, to yeah there's no doubt know. like i bet dr disrespect would probably say yeah, even though they fucked me over, like, this is probably my favorite game of all time. Like, you know, like, the people who are big and, like, playing it all the, all the time and, like, have insane interest in, like, their stats and stuff. Like, I'm sure that they would advocate for, hey, this should be game of the year. But, like, ultimately, like, for the average player, it's like, no, I don't, I just, if it's not a done game... How can you say it's the game of the year? Because it's not a complete. It game. doesn't mean anything anymore. I don't know. There's a there's just a lot of games like I don't know if done means anything anymore. Us, yeah. Because like some games launch where it's like broken and they're constantly working on it, but it's still technically launched. I don't know. I, this it's just ultimately words breaks don't mean into, anything anymore. <laughs> yeah, this ultimately breaks <laughs> into words. my argument of like early access is a bullshit thing to hide behind because you can't figure out some stuff with your game. So instead of, like, releasing it and then continuing to release, like, 1.01 patches, like, you're like, hey, it's not done, so, like, we can keep fucking up. It's fine. As somebody who's not a big fan of early access games, I still think early access has a place, but, yeah, I think they need to... I think people need to be more strict on, like early access and this is early access for like six months at the most like this is we have finished most of the work on the game type thing i mean that's what a lot of betas are like we finished most of it we want to make sure it works technically but sometimes these days like like PUBG was like this is kind of the base after we're gonna throw it out and see what people like and don't like about it and they're gonna be with us in the process of developing the game mm -hmm. so it's like that that's a different way to look at but like 
I don't know. I know Bunny. It, I I used to talk with my friend Super Killer Bunny. I used to talk to him about this all the time. He was like, he's really into PUBG, and I would be like. I just wish they had waited until it was done and then there would be like more maps and like different different sizes and like all these different cosmetics and it wouldn't be as buggy and like it would run well and and I and I feel like I'd have a much better experience. He's like, "Yeah, but then I wouldn't be playing it right now." You know, if you really love the game, then you're just happy to be playing it. So I don't know. It's weird. To be fair, like would they know what people would want? Would they know that Yeah. Like, exactly. People They're trying to tailor it around them. Yeah. So Dude, it's, it's weird. People really want Vault, like, uh, quality assurance people or beta people might not know. Oh, Vault, everybody's trying to get over these ledges we should add in Vaulting. They wouldn't know that till the game's out, and then, you know, it wouldn't be the game. The game that com- will officially be out when it's out will not be the same game if they had just released it straight out. Because yeah. they didn't have that impact. Uh, So... We got a few questions in by our good friend Yuri. If you would like a question on the show, go to readysetgamecast.com slash submit to submit a question, comment, or your favorite Digimon. Uh, so Yuri asked, What is your idea of a great game? And if you made a game, what style slash genre and story would you tell? First of all, I want to say shout out to Yuri, Yuri Gaspar. He's a he's a bud. We use, he's part of Panda Parade, which used to be a thing on my Twitch channel every week, where me, Yuri, Bunny, Miss Penguin Von Penguin, and Squeegee would all play a game, and we'd do it like once a week, every week, and it was like a whole night where. And it start it's the Panda Parade because we started off in World of Warcraft, fittingly enough for the episode, uh, and we played as pandas, and it was fun. Um, Yuri's the dude, but. The first question, what is your idea of a great game? I'm going to disregard that. And I'm just going to go with the second one because the first question is way too broad. <laughs> What's your idea of a great game? I, Did you buy one for the PlayStation 1? <laughs> if it's fun, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, and if you made a game, what style, size, genre, and story would you tell? This is something that every now and then I think about. I thought about it when I was a lot younger. But it's one of those things that like... It varies every now and then i'm like what if what if what if i if i had talent what would i make i could i can make this and it, like it depends because every now and then i think of something easy or easy is more of a small scale thing something along the lines of like rogue legacy where there's like an addictive hook but it's not as many assets and like it's just a really addictive hook that you play in a game for a while and then move on but it also has like grindy elements something with with a grind because i like grinding and stuff like that but at the same time most games where you have to really have to grind like rpgs like jrpgs or or even western rpgs or mmos those are most of the time games like that are made by really big studios with really big budgets so it's not like like it's not like a really small indie studio could make a really big story focused rpg or anything like that so i don't know in my head maybe i pick up infamous because i don't want that to ever die because the sad part of ghost of tsushima is that sucker punch is not making any more infamous games and i'll just pick up that torch hey remember that uh stardew valley was made by one dude so it took him many 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 years so. well, <laughs> one like person slaved can do... away for for a long time one person can do great things darian what about you it's true uh uh I don't know. I like the idea of music video games. Not like rhythm-based video games, but like I really like this game called Eternal Sonata. I mean, it just has like a lot of like musical terms and a lot of the world is based around like one composer's music and stuff. And and I like the idea of music being incorporated into the game uh, as a story aspect. That's cool. Uh, I've always wanted like an Eternal Sonata too, which would be really hard to do because it's all about <laughs> the guy dying and it's his future dream before he dies. <laughs> spoilers. So, like, that's what the game starts with. I it's would, not uh, a spoiler. Uh, I was just about to play Eternal Sonata. Uh, this game's from like 2003. Shut up. <laughs> like, it's so exactly, old. Exactly, man. But I've always liked the idea of stuff like that. So like. I don't know. I would do another game like that. I would also like to see like I I I'm super into like Vocaloid. 
And uh, there's a really long like song series where all the songs are connected to each other. And I, I think it'd be kind of cool to see like those songs made into a playable video game. And then like you're playing the songs sort of not like not again, not a rhythm, but like playing the story that's told in the songs while like some beautiful orchestrated version of the songs is playing in the background. Like, I think that'd be really cool. I think between the two of us, we just realized who is more creative. Not me. <laughs> Not me. Because that I'm, is a way I'm better have idea. Such a hard time doing it though. Like, that's, yeah, for it's sure. So much work. We're, we're just pretending we cool have though. unlimited assets. Let, or yeah, like, pretty much. We, 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 then we, you we won bet the, your butt. <laughs> <laughs> we won the lottery, and we're now making a video game. Um. I'm, I have said before, and I've even said this episode, I'm more of a story gamer, and I think if I made something, I'd probably go with uh, something more story-focused, a walking simulator with gameplay aspects. I'm like Edith, Edith Finch or Tacoma. Uh, yeah, something that the, the story is the focus, and, and the, the gameplay just brings you part of that story. Uh, I'm not sure what story I would tell, but that's kind of the the genre I would focus in. Mm. Uh, Teddy, you want to read Yuri's other question? Sure. Uh, he said, do you ever get tired of games? What do you do instead? What do y'all do? <laughs> uh, I have this problem a lot. Um, I mean, I, I just watch TV, do other stuff for a while. Uh, I will try and play, you know, if if I get tired of AAA shooters or any genre, I'll I'll try and mix it up. Um, but I often just take a step back from video games for a while and and do other stuff. And then when when a game comes out that makes me want to play again, I do that. Like I'm I don't define myself as a gamer or anything like that. So not playing video games isn't huge i uh, i'm a person of many interests so i just switch to a different interest for until i, I, wish I was like that <laughs> what what do you define yourself as a gamer teddy absolutely sadly i feel like it's like an addiction i don't know uh but no i don't the weird thing about this question is like do you ever get tired uh of games i don't ever get tired of video games like sometimes i don't necessarily want to play that game but then i sit down and i end up playing it. and like if i i'll go eh, i'm not really feeling this game but it's what i'm playing at the moment and i sit down and i start playing it, and then i'm like oh yeah i'm still having fun like it i may not be wanting to play that game but as soon as i'm actually playing it i'm like oh like i still end up having fun like no matter what I, video games are just fun uh, <laughs> but it's also like it's not that I get tired of games, but I do a lot of the times, it's more like I miss the other mediums. Like every now and then I don't watch a lot of TV or movies because I'm playing a lot of games and I'm like, man, I haven't watched like a good TV show in a long time and I'll sit down and binge something like it. Sometimes that just happens where I just miss the other mediums. But like, I, I don't. I don't know if I've literally ever just gotten tired of games. Sometimes when I don't, when I have a lot of schoolwork and I'm like writing essays and stuff and like I'm, I'm preoccupied with school for like two, three, like even, even like four or five, like somewhere between two to five days, something like that, or a week, right? Some <laughs> short, but kind of long amount of amount time. You of get time. what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. An amount of time, right? <laughs> if I end up being busy for that time and I don't play a game, like the second or third day, I'm like, like fucking shit, man. <laughs> I haven't played a game. Like I just realized, I'm like, I haven't played a video game in yeah, really long time. Yeah, that's an addiction. You got, you have an addiction. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. I do. It's a good thing. The thing that I'm addicted to, I really love and am passionate about. You know, and it's not not necessarily harmful. You know, because like I can set aside and do that schoolwork, but the whole time I'm like, fucking crap. I just want to be, I just want to be playing this game, especially sometimes when that happens with schoolwork and like a recent game came out and I'm like, well, but yeah, uh, I don't necessarily ever get tired of games, but I do want to do other stuff a lot of the times, but there, there's very f rare occasions when I'm not playing a game on a regular basis. It's just kind of who I am at this point. What about you, Darian? Um, I don't ever get tired of video games either. Um, but I also, 
I like to say I'm a gamer, but really I'm a League of Legends player. <laughs> like, like, I like to try out new you, games no. every once yeah. in a while, but, like, for the most part, like, I, I get pretty serious about League, so, like, if I get sick of League or if I need a break from League, I'll try to play a different game, but I very rarely, like, play a video game till its end because I just want to go back to play League, so... See, that's what I always wish I was. I always... I like playing... I play... A, literally everything except for puzzle games and sports games i play everything but it's like i don't i i specifically like a lot of games that have a big community like i got into league of legends, league of legends at a certain point i like world of warcraft i like destiny like there are a lot of games that i wish i could just sit down and play that game and that game specifically wow wow kills it with so much of their stuff especially recently man like if i had just been playing legion I feel like I would have been happy, but like at the same time, I always want to do that because I want to be more involved in those games because I like those games. But if I sit down and do that, like sometimes I'll sit down and play World of Warcraft for like two or three weeks, and then I'm, then very soon I'm like, I'm liking this, but I want to play something else. Like I just like video games as a whole too much that I like seeing other games and like what they do differently than other stuff. Like I just like video games as a as as like an as an industry that I like keeping up with it. So I try to play a lot of stuff. So it's like, I want to get invested into one game, but I never can. Destiny was the closest I'd ever gotten where three, like, you know, for three years, I played the thousand plus hours of Destiny. But at the same time, I was still taking breaks and whatnot. But there were, there were moments where I probably played like three to six months of Destiny straight. So that was probably the closest. Okay. Well, that brings us to the end of the show. Uh, if you like what you heard today, uh, please go to readysetgamecast.com for links to the podcast on all your favorite podcast services, including iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher, as well as the video version on YouTube. And if you like the show, please subscribe, rate, and review it on iTunes and Stitcher. It helps us grow and become more powerful. Uh... Where can people find you, Darian? Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all Dexterity, uh, D-E-X-T-E-R-I-D-E-E. -E -E. And Teddy? Uh, Twitch.tv slash Teddy Chineris. Uh, Mondays through Thursdays, 7 to 11 p.m. Central Time, and Fridays and Saturdays, 10 to 12 Central, and on Twitter.com slash Teddy Chineris. Spelled C H I N A R I S. And you can find this dusty Wii U gamepad in a GameStop near you <laughs> very soon. Very soon. <laughs> uh, and I am at Last Geek on Twitter and Last Geek Plays on Twitch and youtube.com slash Last Geek, where this will be available. Uh, that, once again, brings us to the end of the show. Uh, thank you for. Another awesome episode. See you in two weeks. <laughs>